Amy. I know I haven't been filming a QA video for a long time, so I know I need to catch up. The first question is by Jenny Plans. What do you think of the Gucci Marmont bag? Oh my gosh, I just talked about that in my tag video. Like I said, I love the Marmont and I love the Dionysus. I think Gucci has been doing so great and they're doing so many attractive bags and they're so edgy also. I love it in pictures. I love it when I see it on Instagram and all that. But when I went to try it on myself, I don't know. I, at this point, I love the bag, but I don't love it enough to buy it. There is something about the combination of the of the bag itself and the chain. Um, it, I don't know. There's something about it that I, I thought maybe it wasn't my style. And also, proportion-wise, they're just kind of a little bit off. I think the mini size is super cute, but then with the mini size, I think I would have preferred a daintier chain. Uh, then I also looked at the small size because those are probably the only size I would really consider. The small size, I don't know. There's something about the chain being quite long if worn crossbody. And, and then again, it's, it's a whole proportion thing. I tried the velvet and I tried the full leather one. I mean, they're really nice. I, I, just, I just didn't love them enough to get it. Second question by Anders Julian. Amy, thank you for your review. I had a question regarding your Speedy 25 and the Iena PM. Uh, I know you mentioned that things get lost in the Speedy and sometimes I do like the Iena better because I feel like it will offer more structure. You also mentioned the organizer for the Speedy which seems great for someone like myself if I purchased the Speedy 25. If you had to purchase either one for daily use, which one would you go for? It kind of reminds me of the Totally. I have a coach bag that looks very similar to that bag and I, I really enjoy that coach bag. I mean, I still use it, but I use it mostly on more casual days. Um, but it's really just so easy, like it's so easy to get in and out of that bag. But it comes down to also how you like to wear your bag and what kind of looks you're going for. I think there's no denying that everyone will love the shape of the Speedy or at least I think most people will really like the iconic shape of the Speedy and despite its sort of flaws or, or things that are a little bit more annoying, people will still accept it and, and still get it and still love using a bag like that and have to just put up with a little bit of, um, you know, the, the constricting opening and the black hole and such. And so I think you can't go wrong with either one. If I were you, I would really try both together over and over again until you really fall in love with either one. I th like I said, I still would probably buy the Speedy for the design uh, because I love how it looks on me. Uh, I know it won't be as easy to access as the Ina probably, um, but I don't I think personally, I don't love the Iena look as much. I already have two larger totes that are completely open with no zippers and I love using totes like that. And so if I compared the two, I would probably pick the Speedy. But then again, like I said, it's, it's really a matter of what your needs are at the moment and why you're looking at these two bags. In terms of organizer, you know what? I had the organizer for the Speedy 25 and I enjoyed it sometimes, but sometimes I hated it so much because I don't know, it's, the Speedy 25 is already a smaller bag and with an organizer inside, yes, you keep things more organized, but you also have to take the effort to put it back into its slot. And that alone is something that I don't always do. I like to be able to just throw things in. I don't really know if I'll ever get one for a speedy bag anymore. I mean, I think they are very useful for something that's open, like an open tote, like the Neverfull. I think they are still really useful for something like that because it's way easier to, to uh, access uh, those kinds of bags. But for a speedy, Mm, I'll think twice actually. <laughs> uh, hi Amy, do you know if there is any way to prevent glazing from cracking, spitting, splitting, uh, peeling? Does it help to use leather conditioner on the glazing? Hope you have a great day. And so uh, she was referring to my uh, Porsche Mitsis video. Uh, no, um, I don't think that you can really condition the glazing per se. A glazing is just the way they, um, as I was told, the, the way glazing is applied onto the edge of bags is with a brush. 
and the glaze itself or the material itself is something kind of in between glue and paint uh, sometimes maybe they could be more liquidy sometimes it could be more thick and viscous so it really depends on the batch or it really depends on uh, maybe at, at that point in time what the glazing material is either LV has changed their formula of the glazing or or they just haven't perfected their glazing material uh, that will be suitable for a bag like the pochette mitsis that you know has so many movable parts and expose edge raw edges uh, and so yeah the way they, they basically apply it is with a brush dip it into the glazing and then go around the bag carefully um, and that is why sometimes it's thicker, sometimes it's thinner. It really depends on the person doing it. So it's really not a matter of conditioning the glazing. It's just really a matter of the quality of the material, I think, and uh, the, the whole thought process behind the whole design of the bag in conjunction with, you know, the glaze and all that. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I personally don't think that there is a way to prevent it. Um, maybe the the best way to prevent it is just to carefully use your bag and if it still happens then i i think that it's more of a quality issue then you should probably get it looked at and bring it back in or if you're just too scared of any of this happening and having to deal with so much drama then maybe just consider another bag like i said it's hard to for me to decide for someone else but my advice is if you know that you cannot deal with the whole like repair process and just even risking having uh, a bag that might might give you issues over and over i'm not saying that it will but it could happen um just maybe avoid buying the bag altogether and i'm not trying to discourage anybody from buying the bag because i love mine obviously and of course i've had mine for a while and i've used it well and you know i don't baby it but i'm quite careful in general as a person and it still happens. I cannot prevent it other than just trying to bring it back and get it fixed again. And, you know, um, whether I have to pay for the fix or not, uh, it's something that I will have to accept eventually that I will have to pay because I haven't had to pay yet. But uh, I, I, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I don't have to have a, another episode of having to bring it in again because of glazing issues or quality issues so far it's been okay but yeah <laughs> sk is asking hi amy did you get to see the iridescent chanel pieces what do you think and it seems like a lot of people are loving the coco handle bag <laughs> is that on your radar that's so funny you guys are mentioning these same bags that i'm mentioning in my video uh the iridescent one yes i did see it in person i think it's lovely uh, i saw the one that is more on the green blue iridescent so it's not the purple one uh, and while i think it's beautiful and i tried it on myself it's not for me just because Blue is actually my least favorite color, I think. <laughs> I don't even think I will add the purple one, even though I do like purple. Uh, it's just it's just hard for me to, to style it. If anything, I think it's easier to style with silvers, um, if, with my clothing. Silvers, uh, browns, blacks, even reds, even a very light pink or beige. Those are really easy to style. And of course, these are all neutral colors, the. But uh, yeah, for me, I, I don't have enough stuff that i wear that can be complementing blue so yeah i wouldn't be adding the iridescent or, or even purple like I, I wouldn't be adding those as far as the coco handle goes um you know what i really love the look but i will it's not on my radar just because uh like i explained in my other video i think the the coco handle or the um the coco bag is just because the, the handle is stationary, every time you open it, it kind of is the same exact same as how the LV Quasette is. The the bag, when you open the flap, the, the handle will also open at the same time and it will kind of like, you know, hit you every time you open it. Um, that kind of bothers me, so I'm not going to add that one. I mean, there's so many beautiful bags out there from Chanel, from all kinds of brands that, uh, you know, those are not the only ones that I will be ever attracted to, so... 
I love it from afar, I love it on other people, but just not from me. Isabel Ferreira, hi Amy. I have the Neo Noe in Noir, but I've been contemplating getting getting the Petit Noe for the longest time. Do you think they're too similar? Also, if you were to rebuy it, why do you intend uh, getting the GM size instead? And does it stay put on your shoulder? Does it tend to slip off? Congrats on getting the Neo Noe. I did end up checking it out in person and I have to say that I like it a lot. It's a lot um, more streamlined and not as bulky as the Petit Noe. Uh, it seems to stay closer to the body and I love the interior lining, it's so beautiful. Uh, now with that being said, I still really really like the Petit Noe or the Noe, the GM regular monogram and Vachetta version. Um, just because, I don't know, there's something about that combination that really speaks to me. I think it's just how iconic um, that it, the iconic vibe is, is like, like it's, I don't know, I'm just so attracted to it. I do like the Neo Noe. I don't know if I'm attracted to it enough to add it into my collection. I do think that it's beautiful and I think if I had unlimited funds and that if I had unlimited space to store everything, I would have added it because it is such a great functional and attractive bag. Um, but it's kind of too similar to my totes for me because not shape wise, but like functionality wise, um, the size, it's more on a medium. So I don't know if I ever have a need to carry a medium size bag because whenever I go for something that size, I would just rather carry a tote, some which is even bigger. So I, I know I can even throw in more things if I needed to and it's just so easy. I know it's different. It's, it's a bucket bag versus a tote, open tote, but to me, they serve the same purpose when I need something that size. So I will not be adding it to my collection, I don't think. Not anytime soon anyway. And um, like I said before, if I were to even add a bucket bag again in my life, I would probably go with the GM size. Just because, like I said, I think if I'm going to go for a size bag like the Petit Noe or even the Neo Noe, I would just go for something slightly bigger just so that I have that flexibility and also I still really like the iconic Vachetta Noe uh, just because I'm really attracted to the style. I'm really attracted to the combo of the patinaed um, Vachetta on it and the monogram uh, and no, I have never had any issues with the strap. That strap is phenomenal. It's so comfortable even right off the bat. It's way thicker, way wider than the Neo Noe. Uh, and I find it super comfortable. I can load up the bag, put a laptop, all kinds of things. Like, like a, I can put a brick in it and I don't feel uncomfortable with it. That's how amazing I thought that strap was. And so that is the reason why I would rather, if I were to repurchase a bucket bag, I would rather just go with a GM size. Coffee and Makeup 24. Do you still think that it is worth getting a square mini after having it for a while? Um, and do you think that it makes more sense saving up for another Chanel bag as a first bag? It's really hard to answer because of the following. I, having had my mini square for a while, I thought that it would completely satisfy my sort of craving for another flat bag. As much as I appreciate it, it's still really, really small. And you guys saw my uh, what's in my bag video with the Chanel square mini flap. I, I did a full review and what I fit inside. It fits quite a bit and it, it, it can fit everything I need um, even with my vlogging camera which is amazing but it's annoying to fit all that stuff in and like I said I have a beef with having to retrieve things easily and quickly and also putting things back that's where the Chanel Mini kind of annoys me a little bit sometimes. It's a great bag for its size, for its price range Chanel wise, um, but um, it's, it's still lacking a little bit. I just wished, I don't know, I just maybe wish that it was slightly bigger. And now we're going into the territory of, well, why didn't you get a classic flap, maybe the medium size. That is why it's hard to answer your second question because 
Um, I don't know if I would feel the same way had I bought or saved up to get a Chanel Medium Classic flap instead of a Chanel Mini. Perhaps I would have have the reverse thought of like, oh, now I wish I didn't spend all that money on a medium sized bag, which is still really small and went with the mini size instead. You see where I'm going, right? It's, it's really hard for me to answer this question because I don't know what I would have said had I done the other way around. One thing is for sure is that I, having had sort of like the larger size, the jumbo and the mini size, I really do think that the medium large is gonna be a perfect all around size. And I know everybody knows that already. It's really the perfect all around size because it's such a, um, I don't know, it, it, Capacity wise, I think it's still very minimal. It's more closer to the mini, mini size, I think, but the look wise and uh, functional, functionality wise, I think it's kind of really in the middle. That's gonna be my answer and I'm gonna let you ponder on what you think you should do. It is really hard because uh, there is not one right answer, I think. Anders, Jillian, hi Amy, how do you like the Emily so far? And do you use it daily? If not, which wallet do you like for daily use? Thank you. I'm trying to decide which one to get. Instead of using this uh, larger full-size wallet, I've just been using a slim card case like this. And like I said, I it's full. It has money in it. It has all my other cards in here. I have like my cash here. I don't take cash with me on the daily basis. So it's full and it's ready to go, but I only grab it when I really, really need it. And everything else, which uh, I basically have like five, six cards in here. Two of my main credit cards, a bank card and my driver's license and like uh, one other loyalty card. And that's all I need. I don't even bring cash with me because I just use credit or debit. And I've been relying on this. It's so easy. I still... I, I don't know, it's it's probably a lifestyle thing. I, I used to always think that I need a full-size wallet because I always have to have everything with me just in case. But I don't know, with cell phones nowadays, smartphones, I have all my loyalty cards stored in it. And the only other loyalty card that I cannot store on my phone, I have it in here, which I may or may not access all the time. Um, really, there's... Like 99% of the time, I don't need my full-size wallet and that's why I've been just relying on a slim card holder like this. You can get this one, you can get the YSL one, you can get the Chanel one. There's a bunch of them available. I've just been really enjoying this one because it's canvas. It's easy to throw it around. It doesn't wear at all. It's so durable. I've been really, really happy with this purchase. Um, so yeah, that's... That's... Uh, you know, ever since I discovered card cases and ever since I discovered that really I don't need all those other cards 99% of the time Yeah, it's been such a lifesaver, but it could be different for you, but I'm just saying That's how my lifestyle has evolved and that's how a lot of people's have as well And with smartphones nowadays, you really don't even need your loyalty cards and it's just so super duper easy to transfer this from one bag to another especially if you go from a small bag to i mean a large bag to a small bag this is so so easy last question by trace trace would you consider the saint laurent medium cassandre as opposed to the chanel mini flap i have that one and thinking i should get the mini or is it too similar she mentioned the saint laurent cassandre bag which i i wasn't even sure which one it was google pictures came up with the one that looks like the kate monogram bag and so immediately i knew maybe the edges has two names or maybe they're just really similar so i'll insert a picture um just so that you guys know which bags we're talking about so between that and the medium and the mini flap um, I don't think they're very similar. However, I think they serve similar purposes. So I have considered in the past uh, the, the Monogram Kate uh, YSL bag actually, uh, just because, I don't know, I, I saw Hey June's one and uh, I love it. Um, she's quite petite and I think I'm just taller than her, but I'm quite petite too. And so I think it would really, it would look really good on me as well. If I were you, 
whether I would get the Chanel mini square. If I want the Chanel look, yes I would. But if I'm just uh, looking to buy another bag, um, but it's really just the same, serves the same function, then I wouldn't, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, there's always going to be so many bags you want to buy. So if I feel that the YSL Cassandre that you have is sufficient for my needs, which for me would be evening use, uh, and just the occasional day use and whatnot, uh, crossbody and whatnot, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy the Chanel Mini just because it's really pricey and I don't know, for that kind of money, I think you can buy so many other bags that may be suitable for another need that you may not have. Now, if you're just going for the look and for having a little bit more variety, then go for it because the Chanel Mini is so iconic. There's no denying that a Chanel flop is always going to make your heart sing that much more. It's, it's very magical how that feeling of a Chanel flop makes you feel. <laughs> That's a lot of the same words, but you know what I mean. In case you guys are wondering what I'm want, uh, wearing, which I normally always talk about, but uh, this is just a super old top, uh, kind of like a little blazer top that I have with the uh, dramatic shoulders and it's crop from Banana Republic and I love it so much. It's so cute. It's from the summer 2009 collection. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye!